Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Breaking 200 suspected dead following catastrophe in North Korea. A North Korean tunnel at a nuclear test site reportedly collapsed twice on Tuesday, according to Fox News. Authorities fear that more than 200 could be dead as a result of the collapse, which occurred first on initial inhabitants and collapsed again after 100 rescuers had gone inside. The tunnel is located at Pungairi, a nuclear test site that authorities were concerned might be unstable following recent weapons tests. Specifically, Experts feared the area's stability following the test of a hydrogen bomb that was reportedly ten times as strong as the one detonated in Hiroshima during World War II. Following that test, a 6.3-magnitude earthquake was measured. Since then, numerous tremors have been recorded, as well as a landslides and a collapsed chimney crater. The nuclear test reportedly left significant cracking and irreversible strain on the mountain which is suspected to undergo a full collapse at some point. The North Korean government additionally released a statement aimed at the U.S. on Tuesday, following a visit to the demilitarized zone by Secretary of Defense James Mattis. North Korea said in a statement, The Trump group's vicious vituperation against the DPRK is an expression of their frustration, fear and horror. On Monday, the hostile nation pointed the finger at President Trump's extreme direct, and long threats for its driven pursuit of nuclear weapons. Plot twist Harvey Weinstein victim in headlines again, but for something so much crazier. Rose McGowan, one of the women accusing Harvey Weinstein of rape, has a warrant out for her arrest for felony possession of drugs. Apparently, via Daily Mail. The arrest reportedly stems from an investigation that took place in January of 2016 after the actress left personal belongings containing controlled substances behind in an airport. The warrant was issued in Virginia in February and has since gone unanswered. But here's where the story gets even crazier. McGowan quoted a tweet on her Twitter page Tuesday morning with the word FACT in all caps. The retweet was one suggesting that the warrant wouldn't have been issued had she taken hush money offered to her by Harvey Weinstein. The hush money comment references the interview she did with the New York Times, in which she claimed that Harvey Weinstein had offered her $1 million to keep quiet after he'd raped her. McGowan claims Weinstein raped her during the summer of 1997. She received a $100,000 settlement and had thought that award included a non-disclosure agreement. Upon realizing that it did not, she revealed Weinstein's true character via her Twitter account. Since initial reports, 81 other women have come forward to report some level of sexual misconduct by Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein was fired from his company and is said to be in rehab for sex addiction. Nevada cop wins Halloween with an hilarious Kaepernick costume that has liberals seething with rage. Halloween is one of those holidays when anything goes. Women wear racy costumes they would never wear on a normal day. Many men dress up in drag as Matt Lauer did today going as Dolly Parton. It is an irreverent holiday for all so we can blow off steam and have fun. It has not and never will be a politically correct holiday. But the liberals in their quest to ruin this great nation are up in arms over a Nevada police officer's Colin Kaepernick Halloween costume. It is hilarious and even more so that it enrages the left, they just cannot take a joke, which is why they have no power in the America. Thankfully the cop in question will not be punished according to the Reno Gazette. The University of Nevada, Reno Police spokeswoman Carrie Garcia said. As insensitive and inappropriate as this is, we have no policy that would dictate any disciplinary action. In the post on Twitter, University Police Officer Antonio Gutierrez, is seen as a cop and as Kaepernick. 
the Kaepernick costume has him dressed in a wig, a beard, a fake nose and a sign that says, we'll stand for food. Funny. Do you think there is anything wrong with this? After all, Kaepernick has gone after the cops and they certainly have the right to hit back with humor, right? If not we are doomed as a society. Share if you agree. Laura Ingram starts new show, immediately says off media with her first words on air. Fox News launched its new primetime lineup this week, and it's already clear they have a new star. That star is Laura Ingram. A familiar name to most Fox News viewers, Ingram made waves on conservative radio for her fierce nationalism and support of Donald Trump. If her first show is any indication, she's not toning down the rhetoric now that she's on cable news. She's as loyal to Trump as ever, and even more committed to middle America. During a segment titled The Angle, Ingram laid out her plans for her new 10 o'clock show. Apparently, those plans don't include cozying up to her new cable news cohorts. What, the left are, really resisting is losing power, Ingram explained. The people took their power back on election day and the establishment is mad as hell. Now. She's here to take away their power on TV, because it's clear she's going to be killing IT in the ratings. The establishment have used their power in media to undermine Trump's success in the White House, but Ingram made it very clear she intends to put the president's winning record on full display every weeknight at 10 p.m. Comment Welcome Laura. And share so that Laura Ingram knows that America is behind her. We need to make her new show a success. Tony Portesta issues icy threat to Tucker Carlson, so Tucker makes him wish he'd never been born. Tucker Carlson responded on Monday evening to a snarling legal threat from a lawyer working for Tony Portesta with three words that surely sent the Podestas into a rage, we're not intimidated, via Fox News. The Fox News anchor said the threat was in response to a report that referred to the Podstas and Paul Manafort as the central figures in special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia probe. Carlson received a letter on Monday from Jeff Garanther, a D.C.-based attorney with a firm called Venable LLP. Carlson said the letter demanded that this show immediately cease and desist disseminating false and misleading reports about Mr. Portesta and the Portesta Group. Garenther demanded Carlson retract and delete prior reporting on the Portesta Group, or risk legal action by Mr. Portesta. The lawyer's letter additionally claimed the Portesta brothers' firm hadn't worked with Paul Manafort in representing the European Center for a Modern Ukraine. Apparently this lawyer hasn't read the Manafort indictment yet, Carlson said. Carlson went on to say that the letter was an effort to use fear to control press coverage. He continued, saying, if you're looking for a summary of all this, here's the one-sentence cliff note to the whole affair, the chairman of one major presidential campaign colluded with the brother of the chairman of the other major presidential campaign to enrich themselves by secretly advancing the interests of a foreign adversary. That happened. That's the swamp they told you needed to be drained. Scathing. While Washington focused on Manafort, Melania Trump did something incredible at the White House. While the entire nation was obsessed with Bob Mueller charging Paul Manafort, how did the media not know this was coming? Dash Melania Trump is as cool as they come. In the first public appearance since the charges were filed and the media lost their minds, Melania stepped out without a care on her mind. Other than to give some lucky children the delicious surprise of their lives. The White House held a special Halloween event today and President Trump and Melania were all smiles. Do they look nervous? No, because Manafort's issues have nothing to do with Trump and have everything to do with a culture of corrupt lobbyists that is endemic in Washington, D.C. According to the Daily Mail, President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump met the children with smiles and high fives and lots of laughs and most importantly, lots of delicious candy. 
there was a shocking 6,000 trick-or-treaters who waited for hours to pass through the White House gates to meet the President and Melania and none left disappointed. Share if you think Melania is doing a fantastic job as First Lady.